Hi, here we go. This is the uh, third tutorial in the series to develop the um, model and CAM programming for Titan 1 3M. So, and you'll be doing some pocketing routines and chamfer milling to complete the part. So, for, again, our first step is to go over here to the data panel. You're going to open your model, Titan 1 uh, 1 3M and um, it'll probably default to model mode so recall, if you recall you're going to switch to manufacture mode in the beginning we uh, are going to do all this work in one setup and this is going to be our fourth setup so we're going to create a new setup and um, the stock volume is going to be set on the second tab before we do anything else stock is no additional stock because all the materials being removed is within the boundaries of the model itself okay and our dimension should be four inches 1.9 by 0.75 we move over to the setup and uh, typically you're going to have to uh, select a z-plane like this and what is x-axis and then you're going to select a uh, model box point for the origin, which should be this corner. Now, if you have trouble picking it up, it's because you're, you modeled your model at that corner being uh, 0, 0, 0, and in which case you're going to select model origin. Okay, it's a little glitch in Fusion. It should allow you to be select that if it's coincident, but they don't. So when you're all said and done, your axis should be X positive pointing right, Y positive this way, and Z pointing up at the spindle. Okay, so after we have that set, we're going to go to the post process tab. We're going to call this 1004 because it's our fourth program. We're going to say operation and we're going to have a work coordinate system of 1 which will output G54 for the Haas machine and then we select OK and we want to rename this setup 4 because that's what it is so when we post process it will output setup 4 as the title of the file Okay, the work remaining to do is to cut this shelf and this pocket and to establish the chamfers around this loop, the outside edge, and this shelf. We're going to go to 2D, Contour, Pocket. We're going to select our tool. For this operation, we're going to use a 3 8 diameter flat end mill. We're going to go to 3 8 and mill, which should be tool number 3. Now, the reason we want to do that is these corner radiuses are nominally uh, half the same radius as a 3 8 end mill. So when we mill this, those will be finished size. Uh, if we used the half inch end mill, we'd have to come back with the half inch end mill to do that work, uh, or the 3 8 to come and do, do that work after the half inch is finished. So we're just going to go straight to it. Okay, We're going to use a spindle speed of 4,000 RPM and a cutting feed of 25 inches a minute, a lead in at 25, lead out at 25, a ramp of 13, and a plunge of 13. Again, that's engaging a lot of material and you want to go slower when you're first engaging that way. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next tab is geometry and we're going to chain the bottom of this pocket and you want to make sure the arrow is on the correct side which it looks it is looks like it is and we're going to leave all the rest of these boxes at default they're not um, relevant with our application and now we're going to move on to heights okay we're going to leave our clearance heights alone uh, we are going to adjust these, uh, the retract height. If we need a little more room, we're going to be doing some helical spiral in, uh, 
approaches that need a little more room than 0.2. So we're going to change that to 0.3, only one point, and we're going to change this to 0.3, our feed height, so that they match. Again, our uh, top height is model top, and our bottom height is the selected contours, as before. Passes. We're going to leave this at 4 thousandths tolerance. We do want a climb cut. Uh, we are going to leave the min min minimum cutting radius alone. Um, we are going to check the box that says finish passes. And what that's going to do is pop open some ba boxes ahead of us. And uh, this compensation type, again, we want to switch that to wear. It allows the operator to compensate for cutter wear. Uh, our minimum cutting radius, we're going to set at zero is fine. Um, and our finish uh, smoothing deviation, we want at 0 0.0004, real tight tolerance. Okay, and our finish pass, we're going to do one. And our step over for that finish pass is going to be 0.01. Okay. We want lead ins on our finish passes, and we want to go 25 inches a minute on our finish cut. We don't need a spring pass, or we're not going to repeat the finish. We don't need finish overlap, preserve order, or both ways. We want the continue to climb cut. Our maximum step over is going to be 80% of our diameter of our cutter. So let's go get our calculator so we can review that. Okay. Um, our cutter is 3 eighths, which is 0.375. And we're going to multiply that by a factor of 0.8, which gives us 0.3 is 80% engagement. So we're going to change our maximum step over to 0.3. And we want to use this morph spiral machining. It's a tricordial math that um, optimizes the load on the cutter based off the geometry. Uh, doesn't do even step overs, but it cuts more efficient and better uh, finish. Now we go down to our smoothing deviation and we want to actually bump that up to four tenths. Okay. Now we're going to select the box multiple depths and the, our menu is going to get even longer. Um, our maximum roughing step down, we're going to set it at a diameter of the cutter, so 0.375. And then our finishing step downs, we're going to do one at the bottom because so we want the floor nice and clean. Of the pocket, and we're going to change this to 0.01 inches to be removed by that finish pass. We don't have any wall taper. Uh, we do want to finish only at final depth, um, and we do want to rough the final depth, and we're going to use even step downs. Okay, so we need to minimize that, not deselect it, so we can see what's left. Um, it's defaulting to stock the leave, which we're going to set at zero and then deselect because we don't want to leave stock. I have noticed an error in Fusion that if that's been checked and you had a value in there and then you deselect it, it still leaves the stock the leave that was in there. That's why I changed that number to zero first. Okay, we do want our smoothing selected and it should be four tenths um, tolerance. Okay, moving on to our linking tab. Uh, we're going to leave preserve uh, rapid movement at default. We want this selected. Safe distance, um, let's put in 0.3. And then we're going to keep our tool down. The maximum stay down distance is going to stay at default. Uh, linear lead in radius we'll leave alone. Um, our sweep angle, we're going to set actually at 30 degrees. And then uh, perpendicular is deselected. Our vertical lead in radius is going to be zero. And we're going to have our lead in and out the same as lead in. Our ramp type is going to be helix, two degrees. Uh, maximum ramp step down, we're going to change that to 0.02. And then our ramp clearance is also going to be 0.02. And our uh, helical uh, radius will stay the same. 
and we're going to select OK. So our cutter came in and it's doing um, all its roughing cuts and then comes back at full depth and does a final finish cut. And the spir spiral um, plunge makes sure that the cutter isn't under a lot of load as it's uh, going down into the work. Okay, so that's your finished pocket routine. Does the roughing and finishing all in the same routine. Now we're going to move on to doing this shelf here. Okay, so we're going to be using the same exact cutter. So we're going to go to uh, 2D contour for this one. So we're going to leave the same 3 8 end mill. Leave the RPMs alone. All this information will carry over from the last routine. So we'll leave that all at default and skip into the next tab, which is geometry. We're going to select a chain that starts down here. And we want to make sure our arrow is on the correct side of the line. Now, right now it isn't. So we're going to flip that. Make sure we're on the correct side of the line. All right. Now that we've got our chain, everything else stays at default. We move on to the next tab, which is heights. We're going to leave all this stuff um, at default, except for that we're going to change this from stock top to model top. On both the retract height and the top height. Now our bottom height we need to change um, because our selected contour included this bit that goes down the radius so we don't want our depth to cut down to this corner because it'll cut our pocket too deep and wipe out our chamfer. So instead of selected contours we're going to go to selection which allows us to select something to say what our depth is and we're going to select this plane of the top of the shelf this face here and that will now set this at its bottom um, if you look at the drawing it's a half inch from the top to the bottom so that number looks correct now we're going to move on to the next tab which is passes we're going to leave the first two boxes at default we're going to change in computer to where, so we have cutter compensation. We're going to skip the allowance. We're going to skip the corners. We're going to skip minimum cutting radius. We leave it at zero. Uh, we're not going to do multiple finish passes. All the way down and skip all these things for now and go to roughing passes. Now that we've selected that we're having roughing passes, up here, it's not intuitive, this uh, um, step over box appeared. And we're going to set our finishing step over of 0.01. Okay. And this box appears and we want lead-ins on all finish passes at 25 inches a minute. So scrolling back down to where we selected this box for roughing passes, we want um, a maximum step over of 80% of our diameter. So remember we calculated that's 0.3 and our smoothing deviation will leave alone for the roughing and we're going to do a maximum of one step over. Now we're going to go to our multiple depths and we want to set similar parameters to our, our uh, pocket. Mm. We have a maximum roughing step down of 0.375 one diameter of the cutter. We're going to have one finishing step down and that is going to be of 0.01 or 10 thousandths. We're going to leave wall taper alone, approach along wall. We're going to finish only at final depth and we're going to rough the final when we're going to use even step downs. We're not going to worry about uh, order by islands because there, there aren't islands and thin wall. Now I'm going to need to minimize this. We're not deselecting anything. Um, but this menu is so long, we got to minimize part of it. But we're going to check our smoothing, which is 4 tenths. Now we're going to go to our linking tab. On our linking tab, we're going to leave the first uh, four boxes at default. 
and then we're going to come down we're going to make sure lead entry is selected and our horizontal lead radius is fine at default and we're going to lead in at a 45 degree angle which will put our lead in um, at the same angle as um, the shelf pocket here and we're going to have a linear lead in distance of 0.2 and we're leave perpendicular unselected and we're going to have a zero for vertical lead in and we're going to lead in lead out we're not ramping in this case because we're coming in from off the workpiece. the rest of these uh, we could select a specific entry point but we're not going to and we're going to select OK and here we go so we have one rough cut and one finish cut and we arc in and cut the radius and the depth should be at the same height as that plane not down here where the chamfer is okay all right so now we have two more routines and they're both going to be with the chamfer mill so we're going to go to 2d chamfer command and we are going to select from the Titan building blocks library the quarter inch chamfer mill tool number 15 okay we're gonna go 4,000 rpm release surface feet alone 4,000 rpm again now this time we're not drilling at this cutter so we're gonna go a little faster we're gonna go 25 inches a minute 25 inches a minute and 25 inches a minute for those boxes now our ramp and plunge rate we want to go slower we're going to go about half that, which is 13. And then we're going to move on to the next tab, which is geometry. Now I'm going to chamfer everything that's at the same Z height. So we're going to chamfer the inside of this pocket, the outside of the part. And then we're going to come back with a separate chamfer with different parameters to cut this one down here. And the reason being is we need to be careful about clearance here that you don't hit the model with the shank of our cutter okay so our contour selection in this case is going to be the bottom of the chamfer for here and the bottom of the chamfer here now we want to look at this at plan view make sure our arrows are on the correct side of the line otherwise we'll get a nice little gouge in our part Okay, the rest of these we're going to leave at default, and now we're going to move on to heights. Okay, we're going to leave retract height, yeah, our clearance is going to be retract height at default. We're going to change this to model top, and the top height is going to be based off our model top. Okay, and our bottom height is also going to be so, uh, based off model top. Now we're going to move on to passes. We have a four tenths tolerance. We're going to use wear compensation. We're not going to worry about finishing overlap. And now on our chamfer information, our drawing says we have a ten thousandths chamfer. And we're going to offset our tip by 0 0.05 or 50 thousandths. And in this case, we don't need a chamfer clearance. So we're going to set that at zero. And we do want to select smoothing because we want a nice clean pass. Leave for the optimization alone. And now we move on to the last tab, which is linking. We're going to leave the first three boxes at default. And we're going to put in a horizontal lead in radius of 0.025. 25 thousandths. We want to lead in. Uh, 90 degrees is fine. And our linear lead in for that is going to be 0 0.025, which is fine. We're going to leave perpendicular selected, a vertical lead in radius of zero. And we're going to lead in and lead out as the same. And we're not going to worry about the entry position select OK. And we see that we have a chamfer mill. So that chamfer mill should be offsetting the correct amount 
just to take that amount off. So this path is offset this way by 50 thousandths and down by 50 thousandths for the tip of the cutter. All right. Now we're going to do this little segment down here. We're going to go back up to 2D chamfer. We're going to keep all the same parameters we used on this first tab using the same cutter, same feeds and speeds. We're going to go to the geometry tab and we are going to select this piece of geometry. I'm going to make sure our arrow is on this side of the line. Leave the other selections at default and go on to the heights tab. All right, so we have our retract height is uh, our retract height is going to be set at model top. Our feed height is at top height. Our stock height is going to be, I'm sorry, our top height is going to be set at model top as well. And then on our selected contours, the bottom height we are going to select selection and we're going to pick the face that's the top of this shelf. Now on our next tab we're going to go to passes and again we're going to change this to where we want cutter comp. Our chamfer width is 0.01 our chamfer tip offset is 0.05 and our chamfer clearance is going to be 0.02 and it's going to give us a 0.02 clearance from here for the diameter of our quarter inch cutter and we want smoothing on. In our linking tab we should have a default on the first three tabs and then we're going to have a lead in entry of 0.1 and our sweep angle of 45 degrees and a linear lead in of 0.1 as well and we're coming in and we're not going to be perpendicular and we're going to set our vertical lead-in radius as zero and lead-in and lead-out same. Now we select OK and we should have our pass. Okay. Okay, so we've finished now the entire machining of the entire part, programming anyway. And uh, again, we'll review the simulation. Uh, we'll probably speed it up since you can watch your own. But uh, we're going to press, make sure we have setup for highlighted, and we're going to simulate. And we're going to make sure we have our stock selected. And we're going to roll tape. And here we go. We have a helical spiral with the 3 8 end mill coming in. And then it's going around, leaving 10 thousandths all around the border with a roughing cut. And it's going to uh, clean up a little bit there, and then it should come back and spiral back down. It's uh, machining out the center, leaving 10 thousandths around the border. Then it's spiraling back down. Roughing around the outside. Now it's going to come back and it's going to um, clean up the bottom. Making probably about 10 thousandths off there. And it's going to go around the outside perimeter, taking an additional 10 thousandths off for finish. And now it's doing. One, two rough cuts, three rough cuts, four rough cuts for the shelf. Chamfer mill comes around, it's chamfering the inside pocket and now the exterior of the part. And finally down to the shelf, as much as you can cut on the shelf. 
All right, and our total runtime statistics is uh, 10 minutes. Okay, so make sure you've saved. And uh, now you're going to do your setup sheet of setup four. And you'll submit that in either HTML or PDF format in Canvas to get clearance to run your program and to get credit for the homework. Okay, should look like that. Um, if you could do a better job than I did, have the uh, setup highlighted with the origin showing and zoom in a little bit more before you make the setup sheet. And this image will be uh, more useful for, for you. And then um, it should have been like that and maybe zoomed in farther. Okay. And then again, you get to, uh, once you have approval to run, you're going to go to this icon to post process to the Haas pre uh, NGC post processor with a program number four, uh, 1004 and uh, operation four and hit the post process and you'll get your code. This concludes the first Titan part, Titan-1-3M.